We continue now at the top of Daf Peyam and Bezim Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 80b. The Gemara asked on the previous summit, can the husband sell his rights to the fruits of the Nechse Melug? So on the other hand, you could say Mishum Ravach Beisa. The only reason he has these rights is in order to improve his own household. As Rashi over here says, Shiachnas HaPeres Lobeso. He'll bring the fruits into his house. Vihei Mozan Abayis Motzi. Vihei Tivlo. It's all going to be good for her in the end. There'll be a lot of food in the house. Aval is Avune Lo, but he doesn't have these rights in order to sell those rights. The whole purpose is that he brings the food into the house. And so the Gemara says, Yehuda bar Meremar mishmei de Rava, Amar Yehuda bar Meremar says the name of Rava, Masha Asa Asa, what he did is done, in other words, the sale is a good sale. Rav Papa Amar mishmei de Rava, but Rav Papa says, and some of the gears of Rav Papi says in the name of Rava, Lo Asa Velo Klum, no, what he did is not going to be effective, it is not going to be a good sale. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Papa, Rav Papa says, Hod Yehuda Mar Bar Meremar. That statement of Yehuda Mar Bar Meremar in the name of Rava that the sale is good. Lav Beferish Itamar Ela Michlale Itamar. It's not that he said that Beferish. We're drawing that from implication. Da'i Itasa Da'i Lele Lagavra Tarti Amasa. Because there was an incident where a certain wife she brought into her husband. She brought in two maidservants. So Azal Gavra Nasiv Itasa Achrisi. So the husband went along and he married another wife. Ayelo Chad Min Ayelo. And one of these maidservants he gave over to that second wife. So I saw it, the Rava. So now she came before Rava. Tzavchet, she complained about it. She said, these are the maidservants that I brought into the marriage. Now they're being used. One of them is being used for the second wife. And lo ashkech ba. So Rava did not pay any attention to her claim. So man duchaz asavar, the one who saw that thought, mishum duchazavar, masha asu It's the same reason. The idea is just like he can sell his rights to the nechsei melug, meaning what he did is going to be effective. That's how they understood. That's why they applied it to this case of the peros of of the uh, of the field. But veloi, the gemara says it's not a good comparison. Mishum ravach beisa. Really, he holds that the idea of the nechsei melug, the fruits of the nechsei melug, is in order to improve the household generally. Vahakaravach, and in this case, just because he's giving one maidservant to his second wife, it's still an improvement of the household. And the Gemara continues, V'hilchisa, and the halacha is, Baal shemochar karka leperos, that if a man does sell the property, the rights that he has to the fruits of the property to somebody else, lo'asa v'lo'klum, that sale is not good, he's entitled to the fruits of the property, but he cannot sell that right. My time, and what's the reason? Abaya omar chayshinan shemetachsif. Abaya now says a new reason. The reason is that we're afraid that this property is now going to deteriorate. As Rashi over here says, shemetachsif hasoda, shelo yocha shalokech lezav lo letaiva, the person purchasing the rights of the fruits, he's not going to care about the actual property taking care of it. He figures I'm going to lose the property anyway tomorrow. I don't own the actual property. I just get the fruits. But the husband, on the other hand, he's waiting. Maybe my wife will pass away during my lifetime. That's what he's thinking. Therefore, he might actually end up inheriting this actual property and therefore he takes care of it. So that is the reason of Abaya, why he's not allowed to sell his rights to the fruits. Rava, my Rava says, Mishum Ravach Beisa. He says the reason we said before. The reason is the whole purpose that he has these rights to the fruits is in order that he brings things and improves the household, and therefore to sell that right away would not make sense. And the Gemara says, My Beinai, what's the difference between these two reasons? Again, reason number one that he can't sell because the property is not going to be taken care of, and reason number two of Rava because the real reason he has those rights in the first place is to is to improve the household and bring in fruits to the household. And the Gemara says, Ika Beinai, the difference between them can be as follows. Ara de Mekarev Lamasa, you could have a piece of property that's near the city that he's able to watch it all the time. They'll be able to make sure that it's taken care of properly. properly. So Abaya's concern would not be a concern in such a situation. And the Gemara continues, Inami, or you could say another difference, Baal Orisu, let's say the husband is a sharecropper on the property. So again, he's working the property. He wants to make sure that the property is well kept. And the Gemara continues, Inami, or you could say, Nafkamina Zuze Vikaavid Buiska. Let's say he sells the rights to the fruits to somebody, but then he's using that money money to do business. So he is improving the household. So then Rav's concern is not going to be a concern, but the concern that the property is going to deteriorate, that still would be a concern. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Shomeres Yavam Shanaf Lula Let's say you have a situation of a woman who is awaiting Yibam and she inherits property while she's awaiting the Yibam. Modem Beishamay Beishelel, both Beishamay and Beishelel, they both agree. Shemocheres Venosenes Vekayim. She has full control of that property. If she sells it, if she gives it away, it is going to be an effective transaction. Mesa, now let's say she dies. Mayasu bechsubaso v'nechasam ha'nechnasin v'hayotzin ima. So what should happen to number one, her ksuba? 
and also to any property that's like nechse melug that normally she brings into the marriage and she takes out of the marriage. So who does that go to? Does that go to the inheritors of her husband? Is that already considered in her husband's property? Or is that not considered within her husband's property? Property Rather, it goes to her yarshim. It goes to her father or her father's inheritors. So Beishamai say they have to split it. The inheritors of the husband and the inheritors of her father, they have to split that property. The property stays in its original chazaka. The ksuba stays. It's, it's in the chazaka of the inheritors of the husband. That's considered already the husband's property. And the property that she brings into the marriage and takes out of the marriage, meaning the nechse milug, that's going to go to the inheritors of the father. That's still considered to be under her control. We'll take a look at Rashi over here. Again, she inherits property while she is awaiting Yibam. So then the question was, what do they do with her ksuba and also the nechse melug? Let's say she dies. Rashi explains, When we talk about ksuba over here, we're talking about the dowry that she brought into the marriage. So what they do is they evaluate how much is that property worth and they write it into the ksuba. The husband then says, he takes achrayas, he will pay her that back. It's part of the ksuba. But then he's allowed to spend, he's allowed to use the actual property. That's what we we mean by chsubos over here, we mean this nedunya that she brings into the property. What happens to that? Similarly, what happens to the nechsei melug? Hey, nechsei melug, she'ein shamino sam olav. When it comes to nechsei melug, they don't write, they don't evaluate it and put that value into the ksuba that the husband owes it to her. He's not allowed to sell that property. He can't do anything. He just gets the peros. She brings it into the marriage and if she leaves the marriage, she takes that property property with her. So what happens with that property? Beishamai Omrim. Now Rashi over here says, Be'evamas perkacholetz kamefarish. In Yevamas and perkacholetz, they explain this Mishnah. Ma'ishna reisha kashik hayemis. What's the difference? In the reisha of the Mishnah, while she's alive, talked about when she inherited some property, she has full control, we said. The low pligi, there's no machlokas Beishamai Beishela there. She'ein lo koach The husband has no koach over that property. Ma'ishna seifa. What's the difference in the seifa when you get to this question about what happens to her ksuba and the nechzei melug? Kishamei so when she dies, Amru Beishama Yachloku Yorshe Habalbem. Now suddenly the inheritors of the husband they have rights to them. What's going on? And so therefore the Gemara in Yevama says Mefarish Nami the Davka Nakat Yachloku Yorshe Habalim Yorshe Av Benichse Melug. They understand this mission a different than the way it reads. The Gemara over there says when it says in Beishama that the Yorshe Habal and the Yorshe Av split the property. That's only talking about the Nichse Melug. When it comes to that Nedunya that Ksuba that actually is completely in her control. Avol Yorshe there's no need to divide when it comes to the ksuba sabal. Even though the Mishnah asked the question, what happens to the ksuba? We ignore that in the answer. Beishama and Beishil are really only arguing about the case of the nechosim, hanechnosim, vayotzenim, about the nechse mulog. And, the, and Rashi continues, Beishil al omrim, nechosim. So Beishil al, they say, the property stays in its chazaka. Rash, Rashi says that Tzon Barzel Bechazkasen. Here we're talking about the property that's what's called Nechse Tzon Barzel. Again, that's evaluated for what it was worth at the time of the marriage, and that's what the husband, that's what he owes. Now, that's not clear what that means. Whose Chazaka is that property in? The Gemara Baba Basra discusses, well, who is the Chazaka with? When it comes to Nechse Tzon Barzel, it could be it's the husband's property because he takes Achrayis on it. He owes her the full value at the time of the marriage starts. Or you could say it's in the chazak of the woman because it really is her property. That's discussed in Baba Basra. And then Beis Hillel continues, the ksuba, that goes to the husband's inheritors. That refers to the mana, masayim, vitosephis. Rashi says, when we talk about the ksuba here, we're referring to the hundred and the two hundred and any additional payment that's owed to the woman in the ksuba. That's really supposed to come to her from the husband that is considered Bechezkas Yorshe Abal, and they get that.
And the Mishnah continues, Hiniach Ochiv Mos. Let's say his brother left over money. Again, we're talking about the case of the Shomeres. Yovam, the brother who died, left over money. So what do you do with that money? Yilkach ben Karka, you should use that money to buy land. Vuochel Peros. And again, this, the, the brother in law, he'll get the fruits of that land, and she's entitled to the principal, the Karka itself. Peros had solution Menak Karka. Similarly, let's say he left over fruits that are detached from the ground. Yilkach ben Karka, Vuochel Peros. Land should be purchased with that money, and he will get the fruits. Hamechub. Barren Bekarka, let's say you had land that was left over and there was fruit that was attached to the ground. So Amar Avi Meir, Avi Meir says, Shamanosan Kamehin Yofen Bepeiros, Vekamehin Yofen Below Peiros. We have to do an evaluation. How much more is this land worth because it has fruits? Bahamos or whatever extra amount it was worth, Yilkach Ben Karka, you have to use that amount of money to buy land. Vuhu Ochel Peiros. And again, the Yofen will get the Peiros, she will get the property. Bachachamim Omer, but the Chachamim say, Peiros Hamechubarren Bekarka, Shalo. If you have Peiros attached to the ground, that actually does belong to him. Hatelushin minakarka and peros that are detached from the ground kolakodem zocha behen. Whoever gets them first, gets them. Kodem who zocha? If he's first, so he gets it. Kodmahi, but if she's first, yilkach ben karka, you use the value of those fruits to buy land. Vuochel peros, and again, he will eat the fruits. And the Mishnah continues Kansa. Now, what happens when the Yavam actually marries this woman? So, Hareike Ishto Lechol Davar. So, it's considered like his wife, and we treat her like a regular wife in all respects. Uvilvad should take Ksubasa al Nechse Bala Rishon. Except in one difference, the Ksuba is paid from the property of her original hus- husband. All of that property is Meshubat for a Ksuba, and therefore, this, this uh, brother in law, the Yavam, is not allowed to sell that property. Lo Yomar, he can say to her, Hareike Ksubasa Ech Munachas al Asholchan. I'm putting a Ksuba money here, I'm putting it on the table, and now I want to do whatever I want with the property. All of his property, all of the, the brother who died, her original husband who died, all of that property is for Ksuba. Similarly, a person should not say to his wife, Here I'm taking your Ksuba money, I'm putting it on the table for you. All of a person's property is really for her Ksuba. Girsha now, if he divorces her, ain't lo el aksuba, then she's only entitled to the ksuba. Hechzira, if he remarries her afterwards, hareka chola nashem, she's treated like any other wife, v'ein lo el aksuba bilvad, and she's only going to receive her ksuba. And Rashi over here explains, Yilkach ben Karka, again, if any money is left over, so land has to be purchased with that money, and he gets the fruits. And the idea is, because her ksuba, really, all of the property of her first husband is meshubed for her ksuba. Like we're going to learn later in the Mishnah. Therefore, all the property of the one who died is achroin for the ksuba. Just that the yavim, he gets the fruits. If he's going to do yibim, he gets the fruits of that property. Property because of metatli mishtabdi lechsuba, and this mishnah holds that the metatlin also is mishubid for the ksuba. That's why again that metatlin has to be sold. You buy land, and that's all part of the shibud towards the ksuba. Shamino sam we evaluate them. The kasavar kol masha gadol berishus hamais achroin lechsuba. Anything that grew during the time in the rishus of the of the brother who died, that's all achroin for the ksuba. The fruit that's attached to the ground actually belongs to him. The Gemara will ask on this, why is that the case? And when it comes to what's detached from the ground, whoever gets it first gets it. The Chachamim are essentially saying that Metaltan are not Meshubit for the Ksuba, unless she grabs it. And that needs to be done during the life of the husband. We're going to say that later on. And the same would be true. They'll argue about money as well, not just detached fruit. There's no difference between money and between fruits that are detached. And then the Mishnah said that she's considered his wife in all regards. Let's say he marries her at that point. She's considered his wife in all regards. That line will be explained in the Gemara. And all of the property which he inherited from his brother. So all of that, like we said, is going going to be Achroin for her Ksuba. Girsha, let's say he divorces her, he marries her and then divorces her. She only gets the Ksuba. But if he doesn't divorce her, 
Kala Nechasa Meshubadim Lo. Really, all the property is Meshubad. Ve'eno Rashoi Limkor. And he's not allowed while she's alive. He is not allowed, and they're married as long as there was no divorce. He's not allowed to sell that property. And Rashi continues, Harei Kechala Noshim. In a case where he divorced her and then remarried her, she's treated like any other wife. Tetanan Mepirkin Dela Kamon. Later on, we say in the Mishnah, HaMegarish Esishto Ve'achzira Almanas Ksuba HaRishon HaChzira. If a person divorces his wife and remarries her, it goes on the condition of the first Ksuba. Of the Gemara Parach Lamali Lashmin and Biyavama. The Gemara is going to ask, why do we have to teach the same thing by Yavama that we have by a wife? And the Gemara says, they have the following question. So let's say you have a situation of a woman who's awaiting Yibam and then she dies. So who's the one that has to take care of her burial? Do we say the inheritors of her husband have to bury her? The Because they inherit the Ksuba and therefore the responsibility to take care of the burial is in lieu of the Ksuba that they're going to collect. Maybe no, it's the inheritors of her father that are the ones that have to take care of her. Because they're the ones that inherit the Nechse Melug. And the Gemara says, Amar of Amram, Rav Amram says, Toshma, come in here, the following proof. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, Shomeris Yavam Shemesa. If you have a Shomeris Yavam that dies, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Pe Aleph, Ahmed Aleph.